Hello and welcome to our little guide to making a sturdy dust collector. So why a sturdy dust collector? A dust collector is a dust collector, right? Wrong. Anyone who's tried to make a DIY dust collector will know that frankly they are just too flimsy. I should know, I made one two years ago back in 2018. Unlike all those lucky YouTubers in the USA who've ready supplies of orange Home Depot pails with tight fitting lids, there just wasn't anything like that in the UK. So I did my research, ordered the parts I could find online easily in Britain and did the best I could. And to be honest, it worked pretty well. It sucked up sawdust and it kept the sawdust out of my vacuum cleaner, which isn't some industrial scale shop vac by the way, but rather something intended to clean up ash from a fireplace. Almost immediately after finishing my dust collector, I realised it wasn't up to the job. When I fired up the vacuum cleaner, the thin walled bucket just couldn't withstand the effect of atmospheric pressure and it would collapse. So, like a lot of YouTubers, I tried to strengthen the bucket. I cut discs out of plywood to stiffen up the lid and once retrofitted, they did a good job. Then I hit upon a crafty way of strengthening the inlet hole into the bucket using a bit of PVC pipe. I cut the pipe down one side and softened it into shape using a hot air gun. And again, this worked very well. For a while. Despite these extra measures, the dust collector kept collapsing and collapsing and collapsing. Eventually, my efforts to strengthen the bucket failed and it literally fell apart. So I just stopped using it and left it to, well, gather dust. It just wasn't reliable which meant it was back to taking ages to cleaning up sawdust after a DIY task was finished. If the bucket was too flimsy, why not use a material that's stiffer than plastic, like this 25 litre open top steel drum? Surely that wouldn't collapse. My ash back is essentially a metal drum, and that's never caved in while running. The snag is cutting the inlet holes. Easy on a plastic bucket, but a steel drum. Hmm, tricky. That is until I came across an ingenious solution from YouTuber Chris Notab. His design involved cutting inlet holes in the bottom of the bucket, which is naturally much sturdier than those flimsy snap-on lids. If you want to know why Chris Notab was using the bucket's base for his inlet entry points, click on the link above to see his how-to YouTube video. But here was the inspiration that made me think. Could I adapt this? and do something similar with my steel drum? Let's find out.
So as you can see, this small dust collector does what I believe is a pretty good job of keeping sawdust out of my vacuum cleaner. If I was going to make any improvements, I might revisit the internal pipe work that's on the edge of the dust collector's lid. The idea is that this inlet doesn't just point straight down into the dust collector, but is set at a slight downward angle to promote the creation of a cyclone. It's the cyclone that helps swirl the sawdust around the inside wall of the dust collector so it spirals down to the bottom, rather than getting sucked up through the centre outlet to my vacuum cleaner. If I could drop that angled pipework down a little further from the lid, that might help keep even more sawdust in the dust collector. We'll have to wait and see if I need to make any modifications though. For now, I've already used my dust collector a couple of times with an orbital sander. It's done a wonderful job of keeping the dust out of my vacuum cleaner so it can run all day long without overheating and cutting out. There you have it. If you found this video useful, I'd love a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.